Well, today we're very, very privileged because in uh, actually in the library, university library, we came across this special collection, which to me, being a midwife, is extraordinary and really, really special. I would like to take you round, right, um, what, what collection this, this involves. As you can see, this collection was donated to the um, University of Malta Library Archives by MMDNA. This is an organization, Malta Memorial Domiciliary Nursing Association. Um, this organization all right, um, um, is, was partly a nursing organization, but within it there were also midwives. And what's very, very important that the midwives within this organization took care of women um, during their pregnancy, uh, during birth, all in the community, very often in the woman's home. They also took care of the woman after the birth by visiting her at home as well. So as you can see from here, the, the, the midwife uh, or nurse used to wear this uniform, this blue, nice, attractive uniform. She used to wear this cap, and she used to wear also this belt, buckles, that distinguished her um, as a staff nurse or SRN or the midwife. Because we have to mention that um, around these days, uh, 60s, 70s, um, the training for midwifery, you first have to do nursing training and then continue studying to become a midwife. Here, these items, you know, they bring a lot, a lot, things have changed a lot, you know. And this is a mixture of nursing and midwifery, it's because nursing and midwifery very often had skills that they shared. What I'm carrying here in my hand, this is a Bunsen burner. And here we can also see the test tubes, right? So what comes to mind, what comes to mind is that things in those days were different. Um, if, if you wanted to test the urine of uh, somebody, uh, in particular for glucose, which is, um, you know, diabetes is quite common in Malta, we didn't have yet those sticks, you know, that you dip and you get the reading instantly. No, what we used to do was to put some solution here, very often Benedict solution, put some drops of urine in it, heat it up and depending on how the color changes, all right, if it's, it remains blue, that means there is no glucose in the urine, but if it changes to green, um, yellow, orange, and brown, that is the, 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 severe, the severity of the glucose it contains, the load there. We also, what also is uh, important now, and uh, you know, it's, it's quite, it brings a, uh, along quite a bit of nostalgia, is that a simple syringe that we can now buy, you know, over the counter and it's disposable. Well, in those days, I remember even in my days as a student nurse, um, uh, they were not disposable. They were uh, metal, made of metal and glass, and these had to be boiled. Now, to be sterile, in those days, means of sterilization of articles, that means so that they won't have any microbes, was through boiling them in water. We used to call them sterilizers. These are huge containers um, with boiling water, and that's how they used to, to be sterilized. Nowadays, this has all changed because, um, okay, um, most of the things are disposable, but the instruments we don't throw away, they're not disposable, but we send them for autoclaving. They are um, uh, autoclaved, put in an oven to be sterilized that way. Now, um, also, these containers that nurses and midwives used to use, we have here ones, you know, enamel ones, you know, it's, they're quite... Nowadays, and we have also here a selection, they are stainless steel. Okay, so this has all changed. If we look for this, this is a particular midwifery instrument. This is the fetal stethoscope, the pinard stethoscope that the midwife used to put 
against her ear to the woman's abdomen so that she could hear that the baby's heart is uh, working well, is, 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 is beating regularly. This, is, this was a very important instrument, it still is, but now since births have shifted to hospital, there is more technology, very often women's, um, the fetal hearts are listened to by um, instruments, technology, monitors, or ultrasound, you know, but with, um, this was the only instrument in those days for the midwife to listen to make sure that the baby is fine. Further down, right um, down, there is that instrument here, this one, this metal thing. Um, this was used as a method to relieve pain. There were some lotions that we used to put, like triline. Um, and this used to be attached to this mask for the woman during her the contractions, you know, that um, are a bit painful um, uh, during labor for, for the labor pains and labor contraction. This used to be attached with that um, small machine. The woman used to breathe through here so that in that way, this um, trilane um, or the solution that they used to, to use um, used to relieve her a bit of the pain. Nowadays, we use Antonox, which is 50% oxygen, 50% nitrous oxide. Um, and we don't use those machines anymore because they are all plugged uh, on the walls, you know, on, on, um, beside the beds, and the woman can use, can use liberically. Um, this is possibly, you know, um, to my knowledge, there used to be like a, 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 a wrapper, right? Um, and this is a scale to weigh the baby, to weigh the baby in particularly at home, because to weigh babies, we used to have these kind of scales. They are not digital at all, and we used to have these weights, right? For example, this is, well, it's quite heavy. It could be um, five kilos, you know, and, and th there used to be um, other weights. And this was used for mothers to weigh their babies. Obviously, for the midwife to weigh the baby at birth, but all during, you know, as the baby is growing up, it, they used to go to the pharmacy or to, 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 to some Berja clinic just to weigh the baby there and um, there are other items of interest we don't see these anymore for example this is a, <laughs> a stethoscope right um, a, a sphingomyometer sorry this is to measure the blood pressure um, uh, these needed you know they were this presentation I remember them very clearly in hospital carrying them around in these uh, boxes and there is then, we measured the, the blood pressure, there was the mercury, which used to pump up. Um, and uh, obviously we have the cuff here that is wrapped around the patient's uh, arm or the woman's arm. And the mercury is pumped up and we used to listen, obviously, to um, the blood pressure. Nowadays you don't see this, you, you see a small gadget, digital gadget, you still have the cuff. But the gadget is small, with the press, press of a button, you get the reading. Um, okay, let's see what we have here. We have, you know, all these, you know, um, yes. This is linen and bandages, uh, but because we also have to remember that nowadays we have very efficient dressings. We have many dressings to dress the wound and um, every dressing does a particular kind of thing. But in those days we used to do the dressing, the staff, the nurses or the students used to do these dressing by having these rolls of cotton wool and then getting these um, rolls of gauze, we used to open them, put the cotton um, wool in the middle right, um, folded, and we used to have to cut the dressings to be used. 
we used to have gauze swabs, right? So um, uh, gauze folded together or, or, or the dressing when we needed um, dressings. Um, we have, you know, these utensils, very efficient. Uh, garlic pots, again, syringes. And now we bowls, right? And these cases here used to carry a, the, the equipment the midwife needed to perform a home birth, right? Um, in the community, um, during those times, the, the midwife was a very, very, she still is, but since birth shifted to hospital, now very often you come across midwives that are working in hospital. During these days, the midwife was a very important um, person within the village because she practically delivered all the people in her village. Um, not only that, she had to register the birth in the police station and uh, that used to happen, so she was a very um, respected person. We as midwives believe that if everything is okay, the mother is healthy, there is no no reason why she, 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 she shouldn't give birth at home, or at least, most important, not at home, but the contact with the midwife. These mothers used to know their midwives before they got pregnant because everybody knew who the midwife was. We, we wish to have a system where the mothers get to know the midwives before because this gives them support and they are comfortable and with regards to the mother being relaxed and comfortable, the outcomes of birth, these are researched, are very much better. So maybe in the future, we would focus again on midwifery being done in the community, not necessarily the birth, but the contact with the midwife, the visits, the antenatal care in the community. And then when the time comes, the, midwife, the mother can come to hospital, but the midwife is there, she already knows her. And for them, it is a big celebration for the two of them, because there is this continuity and, and uh, a relationship would have um, developed. And the outcome for the mother um, shows that it is better with regards to birth outcomes. And for the midwife, yes, because it used to carry, perhaps, um, it still has, but uh, increased job satisfaction because the encounters with, with, with the woman would have developed now through a relationship and a big friendship. But having said that, we now can have a look and see what's inside. Ah, oh, yes. These are so neatly put into this uh, pocket. So we have here um, linen, all of cotton, that the midwife probably used to, 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 to use during the delivery. Um, so, so here we have a mask, for example, all right, this is a face mask. They don't come like this at all now. They're all disposable paper, etc. Right, and so we have another mask here. And, okay, this is a gown. A gown that the midwife used to wear to conduct the delivery. Now, um, Nowadays, we do not wear these um, cotton gowns. We wear um, an apron, a plastic apron, because, well, these all have been researched, but this, is, this was the way the midwife used to protect herself, you know, um, when she came in contact with the mother during the birth, to try to minimize as much as possible infection. Um, uh, obviously, there has been a lot of uh, research, right? I mean, in hospital we still wear gowns, but as I've said before, most of the things were disposable. These needed to be washed and ironed, you know, so that um, as much as possible. But this was the midwife's protection, protecting um, herself 
and also the woman from infection. The dis big disadvantage is, is that if they got wet, right, and very often during the birth they can get wet because of the lycor that, that comes out, or maybe blood, and they remain, um, so, you know, the, the, the part of the defense part from infection then is not to, to, to be there. But we can see here that the midwife used to protect herself well during the delivery. If you have to see midwives conducting births today, they don't wear this, this, this gown or the mask, right? Except, except in special cases when there is um, some sort of infection to protect um, herself, you know, the midwife. Uh, what is very, very important is washing of the hands. They used to, they knew, you know, um, even uh, how important the washing of the hands uh, was. And for midwives, you know, just um, to take care, they shouldn't have long nails or nail polishes or rings because those are um, all uh, means of carrying infection. Um, um, but uh, with regards to protection, obviously then, and I can see it now, they used to wear um, some rubber gloves. Now, these are quite modern in the sense that all right they might have been here um, along the 70s and 80s but if we think of midwives before those time right um, they used to have a kind of a special soap where they used to scrub their hands well you know to conduct the birth nowadays it's important that we do wash our hands very very important to prevent infection but also to wear um, sterile gloves these pair you open them you put them you put them on again to prevent infection because we have to to, to uh, keep it in our mind that um, well further you know perinatal um, perineal sepsis and and these things these infections or infections during the puerperium that means six to eight weeks after birth used to be quite common and uh, unfortunately, the, um, a lot of lives, young women's lives, the, 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 the maternity, ma uh, maternal mortality rate used to be very high, right? Nowadays, we, we wouldn't have that, but it, it was the advancement, obviously, of infection control, advancement of the environment. But we also have to mention that there is also the advancement of better nutrition, better hygiene um, conditions and better sanitary conditions in the home that um, particularly contributed towards having a much, much, much lesser um, maternal mortality rate in, in, in industrial countries. Um, the, the maternal mortality rate after, um, is, is practically uh, insignificant, right? Um, basically, it's because of the increase in research, increase in equipment that um, help us and uh, um, diagnosis and investigations that help us prevent or to get to know that there is a, the infection is already there to treat it or to prevent infection. Um, it's amazing how this pack is so nicely um, uh, packed. So. What do we have here? Oh, I remember these. This is a, um, a suction apparatus. So we have here this, this um, container and we have two tubes, right? The red one used to go into the midwife's mouth and the other end, without the color, used to go into the baby's mouth. This was used when the baby was born and he needed suction, mucus coming out from, from um, the baby's mouth. So it practically, the midwife used to have to suck it out of the baby's mouth. These are no longer in use. We have now uh, electronic ones, you know, working by electricity because also they might have both a degree of danger to the midwife if by accident she used to inhale, you know, the, the suction from, from the baby. But it's nice to see another one. We used to have lot. Yes, this is something, look, this is a modern one. I mean, this is a disposable syringe, right? So this came after the glass syringe. 
the glass syringe that had to be boiled, but these are thrown away. So we can see that um, this this pack, right? We have this pack. Um, it's good that uh, we're talking around the 80s, maybe already had those syringes because before that time they would have had those glass syringes. Another interesting item that we use today. This is of today's. This is the cord clamp. So when the midwife delivers the baby, right, she has to cut the baby from the mother. Now to do that, she has to, to clamp the cord, piece of the cord, so that then she can safely cut the baby off the mother. We have this. These are disposable and these are still in use. But when we had community births, and these were not available, this is sterile and separate, the midwife used to have some kind of cords, thick thread, and she had to make sure to tie it well, you know, cord ties immediately. They, they used to be in a container with, with some kind of sterile um, disinfectant, you know, and the midwife used to have to tie, like, imagine, you can imagine like a shoelace, you know, the, the tiny ones. You know, um, uh, that, that, uh, the, the round ones, you know, she used to have to tie it well because if it became um, uh, dislodged or something, the baby then would start losing blood. And that is very, very dangerous for a baby because even a few cc's that the baby might lose might also jeopardize his life. And uh, let's see. Okay. Yes, also, so um, we're talking about birth in the community here in the 70s probably, is because I'm finding these kind of files. These are uh, syntometrin. It is something we still use today. And this is given to the mother immediately when the baby is born. To, um, to control bleeding because one of the major complications um, of birth it could be that the mother could profusely bleed right so but this is something quite modern it is the syntometrin it is um, syntocinone as well syntocinone and dargometrin and the midwife used to in uh, inject it into the mother into the mother so that the placenta would be delivered, the afterbirth is delivered, and there is better control of vaginal bleeding. So this would prevent postpartum bleeding. Um, other methods, will you tell you, somebody might ask, but uh, I mean, this is something, you know, um, that hasn't existed forever. Other methods would include, for example, putting the baby immediately to the breast, because the suction of the baby on the nipple of the mother uh, will contract, make the uterus contract, and in that way prevent loss of bleeding. So going back to the cord clamp, I've just discovered we have the thread that the midwife used to roll up the cord before she used to cut the baby from the mother. Um, here we have some instruments that we still use today, basically very, very few instruments. So we have these, we call them um, Spencer Wells uh, forceps. This used to, is used to put first this when the baby is born and there is the cord. You clamp this so that you stop the bleeding from coming, right? And then after you have clamped to, with these forceps, then you can cut the baby from the cord. So um, it's, it's very basic. We still have it in, in our delivery packs. Two, two artery forceps. Um, we have the scissors. Well, now we have a cord scissors. And there is also this tweezer. This tweezer probably was used to clean maybe around. But it is very important if the mother, which I doubt it, needed any sutures, you know. Um, most of the births used to be perineum intact, but um, I, I'm sure that if she needed some kind of, of sutures, then either the doctor or herself used to come over to do it. Right? Now, we also have here some kind of preparation 
you know, um, in those days we used to shave the perineum, right? Um, the, this is a razor to shave down, down below. Nowadays, nowadays we don't do that because we've seen that abrasing the skin could actually predispose the woman to more infection. If there is a lot of hair, which now we have the laser, we don't see a lot. <laughs> um, those are usually clipped. Um, yes, this is the baby's weighing scale. You know, that it, it, it used to have like a, a, a bag, a small um, material bag, and the baby used to be weighed like that. This is to clean a garlic pot, we call this. Um, we also have here the fetal stethoscope, that is to continue monitoring the fetal heart. And here, which uh, maybe goes with this, we have some disinfectant with, that the midwife used to put uh, in the gully pot or in one of these containers here, the kidney dishes with swabs so that she could clean the woman. This cream is, um, in fact, we don't see it anymore. Um, the brand is still here, but uh, we, we still use cream. This was used um, by the midwife to examine women so that her, her, her fingers her two fingers, which she uses to examine women vaginally to see how far she is in labor, they are lubricated and it would make it more um, easier. So, we can say, well, this is the complete, there are many, many similarities which um, obviously still exist today um, during the birth. Um, other instruments, other things have changed, like we don't use the sucker anymore, we don't use the, the cord ligature anymore, but we have substituted. And generally, the, the main aim is to have more disposable things, so that to prevent infection and prevent um, purple sepsis, um, which was one of the major problems during you know, um, uh, earlier times.